Down there, down there, is down there. There it is. How do you know? How do you know? Because I see a bunch of old stuff. Awesome. Oh, hey, he's got to look at all the Model A's. Oh, yeah, he does. Look at the yellow one, just like the one I bought. Right, get fired, the good looks. Get fired. All right, let me hit it. Bird! Greetings! I thought it never rains in California! Burn! Liquid sunshine! What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Great! Can we look over there? Oh, absolutely. We walk out of the garage and onto the back of the property. Which way? Right straight ahead. Straight ahead? All right. And this is where you can really see how long they've been there. Whoa. What's he got? Frankie's holding out, man. That's where it's all at right here. Is this here. a stash back here, Vern? Hey, what's that one right there, Frankie? Uh, Roadrunner. Yep. Oh. That is my son's. How long has it been sitting back here? 20 years? I would say 10. 10 years. Yeah, this is a... Man, this thing's a bruiser, man. It's a decent car, though. It's a Plymouth Roadrunner. I mean, it's not a Charger or anything like that, but it's still a 70s muscle car. Whoa. Oh, boy. The motor is a 440. It's the biggest, most powerful R&B block motor Chrysler ever put out. It was introduced in 66 and made for 12 years. At one time, we had a high rise on it because that's a restrictor plate right there to lift it up. If you had a muscle car, you wanted a 440. Looks like a good time, man. 70, isn't it? That's right. I could check with my son right quick if he wants to sell it. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah, Price give it. him a call. Ken, there's some fellas here who would like to see if you would like to sell your Roadrunner. Here. Hey, how you doing? My name's Frank. I stopped by and we're talking to your dad today. This uh, Roadrunner's sitting back here. I was wondering what, uh, what would you have to have for it? Eight? Eight thousand? Yeah. What were you thinking? Uh, I mean, it's a total project here, you know. I mean, there's, the motor's worth some money, obviously. The body's, uh, the interior's not too hot. I mean, I was thinking more around 3,500 bucks. Yeah, I, I can't go that low. I can go down to five. From 8,000 to 5,000, that's a promising leap. At least it sounds like Ken's ready to negotiate. So what you see on the car is what you get, right? Yeah. Okay, I don't have the best history with Plymouth. I'll take it for 5,500. What do you think it's worth? Three to 5,000. <laughs> but this Roadrunner, this is too cool to pass up. Well, I'll tell you what, let me mull it over for a couple minutes and uh, let me see what we can do. Okay. I got a buddy named Brian and he might be the perfect buyer for this car. First step, photographs. I'm just trying to shoot all the blemishes, the rust, the dents, so when I send the pictures to the guy, he knows what he's looking at. Now, all I gotta do is wait for Brian to call me back. Brian. I'm here. Hi, dude, did you get those pictures? Yes. My buddy Brian's been a Mopar enthusiast his whole life. He's a radio disc jockey. He likes to restore cars. He's the kind of guy that'll bring this car back to life. You, uh, you interested in it? Start. Start there? It doesn't start. It's been sitting for like 10 years. Okay. I would be in for 65. If I can get it back to Iowa, you'd be in it at 6,500. I'm in for 65. Okay. So Brian says he'll pay $6,500 for the car, but I know it's going to at least cost me $1,000 to get it back to Iowa. All right, Brian. So in order for me to make a decent profit, I need to be in it about 2,500 to 3,000. Hey, Ken, this is Frank. Hi, Frank. Hey, how you doing? Hey, you know, I talked to my buddy on the car. I could do 2,500 on it. Oh. Did you go up any higher? Anything more? I'll tell you what, I'll do 3,000 cash on it. I understand. Uh, you can have it for free. Okay. We'll do it. Okay. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. I know Ken paid $600 for it, and I'm sure having a family, they need the money for other things, for schooling and stuff. I'm glad they both came out a winner. See, you didn't have to even get in the middle. This is a great deal. I think my buddy's going to be happy. You don't see a lot of these cars out here anymore. That car could have sat back there for another 20 years, and nobody would have been able to be able to enjoy it, see it, or drive it. Frank pulled a rabbit out of his hat on this one. He bought and sold a car before we even left the property. Hi, Bert. Hey. My wife, Eula. Eula? Yeah. Nice Hi, Eula. to meet you. Nice to meet you, Frank. Hey. You know, Vern, he seemed like a good old boy. I wish I could have sat and talked with him all day, but hey, it was raining. We had to get out of there. We didn't scratch the surface. I don't think we put much of a dent in it. We got a few things. I am downsizing. I think I've had my fun of collecting. See you guys. I can let things go to somebody else that really appreciates old stuff. Bye. Oh, that rain is terrible. 
it's like a day-to-day -day treasure hunt. I'm out there looking for rusty gold. I'm looking for the unusual and impossible. It's back roads, it's dumpster diving, it's flea markets, it's people's homes.